Chapter 2 When he returned to Capernaum some time later, word went round that he was in the house, and so many people collected that there was no room left, even in front of the door. He was preaching the word to them when some people came bringing him a paralytic carried by four men. But as they could not get the man to him, through the crowd they stripped the roof over the place where Jesus was. And when they made an opening, they lowered the stretcher in, on which the paralytic lay. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, My child, your sins are forgiven you. Very often in life, we have to do all that is possible to have that encounter with Jesus. We are told it was perhaps impossible. So many people collected, there was no room left. No room left, not even the door. And they decided, let us climb the top of the house, remove part of the roof, lower the man so lots of effort went into this and they lowered him in the presence of Jesus and seeing their faith seeing their what their, their, their hope they tried all means to ensure that this man received some healing Jesus told him your sins are forgiven you now the man is paralytic is a paralytic unable well to walk you're lying on a bed and Jesus starts your sins are forgiven you. When we talk about miracle, in my mind, the greatest miracle is that of the forgiveness of sins. Because synonymous with the forgiveness of sins is healing, transformation, and the ultimate salvation. Healing, yes, of the physical body, yes. But it is good to hear Jesus saying, your sins are forgiven you. So today we go to the Lord and say, Master, we believe in your healing. We come to you and we ask you to heal us most of all, forgive us of all our sins so that we can hear your voice saying, your sins are forgiven you. And we thank and we praise and we bless God for giving us, for forgiving us of all our sins. Amen.